So there's this guy, David Rosado. Uh, he's a scientist in machine learning, social sciences, and he's been doing statistical analysis of terms used at the me media outlets like the New York Times. Okay. So stuff like this. Here he is in the National Association of Scholars. Right. Prejudice and victimization themes in New York Times discourse. Here's a here's a substack. Academic literature. He's he's looking at words used in academic literature. He looks at like yeah. millions and millions of papers at a time. And, and then he realizes extracts how many terms are used in what way. Okay. Um yeah. and here's some examples of New York Times. ABC News, Atlantic, BuzzFeed, wow. for like a prevalence of terms denoting right or left political extremism. Wow. Seems to suggest here that there's more of them on the, more, oh, more terms used for <laughs> political extremism on the right than yeah, on the left. But he has been doing lately, like just the New York Times. So, so he, he did this whole report just on the New York Times. Okay. So we got, I'm going to look at some of these charts here that he has for just words in the New York Times. Right. Terms denoting various things. So take like war, just the word war. Okay. As it's been used since 1970. Right. So, you know, it's up high in the late 60s, early 70s because the Vietnam right, War. Right. And it went up, uh, I guess, in like 1990, probably for the right, uh, right. Iraq, mm -hmm. the first Iraq, Iraq War. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the 9 11 there. You know, mm -hmm. typical what you'd expect. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something like AIDS. Well, it went up high during the time when AIDS was a thing, right? Right. It was the news. What do that's you know? Right, that's so, right. So, like gay rights, when gay rights was a big thing in the in the in the eighties and yeah, whatnot. And then, uh, how about China? China's mm -hmm. become a big thing yeah, over yeah, the last yeah. 20, 30 years. It's no kidding. And it rises up, and you know, that's all. All this is totally normal. Right. Take something like Amazon. Amazon, you know, sure. When it starts being a big company, mm -hmm. and you see, you hear more about it. Mm -hmm. All that just totally seems totally normal, right? So Amazon was being used in the seventies as something meaning completely well, different than yeah, yeah, how the we use river and the yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. The river and yeah. whatever. But so that's all normal. Just yeah. the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And you so you, and then you maybe got some stuff that goes down over time and sure. declines, like General Motors, it just keeps getting less and less in wow. the news, you know. Yeah. How about the word radio or oh, man. church? It goes down, 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 down. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. For the word or how, how about the word duties? <laughs> I thought that was funny. Oh my um, gosh. Down, duties. Down, down. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. But, that, but you know, it's pretty, that's it's to be expected, right? Um, right. And then there are issues that are raised because of specific news events. Okay. So, like um, hate speech. There was a hate speech law in the late 90s, I think it was. Right. And then, so you saw talk about hate speech. And then there's like, take something like fat shaming. You know, uh, wow. people were getting more obese, I guess, uh, uh, more prevalence yeah, of obesity. And so flat. now fat shaming could be like a real thing. Look how flat it is, though, from the 70s. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a term that didn't exist before. I don't think it did. It couldn't have existed at 0, 0.0. .0 per but it could be coming from a news event, right? right. And oh. and then there's like words that are fads, like microaggressions. Just kind oh, of I just went down. Boom, came uh, yeah, came um, now, the thing is, what his work is, or what he's kind of focusing on is, and why he's doing this mm -hmm. research, is that there's some things that aren't very easily explainable. Right. Like terms that show up at a very high rate, maybe all of a sudden, and it's hard to explain, well, what's the news that's motivating this, right, 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 that's something right, in the news? Right. All right. So let's just take simple, you know, word like oppression. Right. Wow. Um, did something happen in the news? All of a sudden, everybody's oppressed. I don't know. People are getting oppressed. Left That's and right. crazy. Um, a word like traumatizing suddenly just takes over the pages of the New York Times. You hear the word over, you know, you see the word constantly. Oh, again and again. And again. <laughs> I don't even know how. So, that, what exactly happened that well, traumatizing that's the thing, you know, was such a I don't know. Very well, useful word. well, all of this, you. When this goes up here, like really yeah, fast, that yeah, was that around was 2010. You'll see that again and again. Okay. You know, we, we had that other video about WTF happened in 1971. Well, this oh, one's going to be about 2010. Right? I see. A lot of this is 2010. I'm trying to think about a word, a simple word like upsetting. 
how did a word like upsetting that doesn't even it's not even like a buzzword but it just suddenly soars in around 2010 and mm. hateful mm. same time 2010 kkk now this apparently yeah. i don't know is there a news did the, did the kkk do something well i looked it up and I, I went to the right adl the anti-defamation sure. league and they have an article saying that the kkk hasn't basically not even been a functioning organization for many decades and it's been you know whatever's left is just sort of declining less and less and less so right? what happened so nothing happened nothing happened all of this rise here happened huh. without any news about the kkk that's, without that's anything pro provoking it yeah in other words motivating that. and this is the new york times yeah, right yeah, so yeah. what in the world is the new york times like those are crazy talking about the kkk wow. you know i don't they're the supposed to be the like the paper of record or whatever so i don't mm. know what was going on mm. and why it's been going on now for since 2010 right but in 2018 it looks like it went down a little yeah but not yeah. not not a whole lot it's still there they're still talking about the kkk i guess but okay. so like of course racist oh wow that's um, staying in the air that one yeah. apparently people weren't racist before 2010 i don't know at least not very much and then mm. inequality suddenly took off looks like a little before 2010 there yeah that definitely um yeah uh, social justice had been discussed in the past but it really took off in the 2000s wonder what um, might took a dime xenophobia just went from kind of very low to just mm -hmm. suddenly that's everything 2010. Mm -hmm. all right and then there are issues that are out of sync with historical news events mm -hmm. so like if i asked you when was like the phenomenon like feminism when was that like a big news story a big brand new thing it was big big new, everyone was talking about it 1970s yeah probably. pretty much i mean you mm -hmm. know yeah lots um, of, lots the bra of burning and all that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. um so you would think the feminism would be 1970s right and but it looks like this right they just start using the word feminism constantly yeah yeah saying like sexism wow. suddenly it's talking like constant and then there's like this one islamophobia you might say oh yeah 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 there was the 2001 the, the mm -hmm. towers mm -hmm. exactly. you know, bombing you know so people start talking about islamophobia well the only problem is this little this rise here right only happened in 2010 which is years after nine years after 9 11 all of a sudden islamophobia is a problem I don't wow know. but um so yeah so mm. this is the kind of research Weird that he's stuff, doing it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very interesting well the next thing is issues in the uh, in at the new york times that are, appear to be just plain you know ideologically driven mm -hmm. they're, they're out of con they don't have any context to something happening in the news and this is like a whole bunch of stuff here we got cultural appropriation intersectionality gender identity wow non-binary you know just out of nowhere all of a sudden it's non-binary everything wow. the newspaper's talking about it constantly well that's queer transphobia i didn't even um, know the word queer was back <laughs> well apparently it wasn't really much before but now it's a big deal huh. yeah slut shaming that's a big word in the New York Times, apparently. Patriarchy. Wow. Male privilege. Uh, Where's so, the patriarchy again? Let me see the patriarchy again. Why would they? Why would like just, nothing. Just like a natural. All through the 70s, yeah, just a 60s, natural, 70s, yeah. 80s. No big deal. And then all of a sudden, after 2010, the New York Times, it's all over it. They've got the news on patriarchy. Male privilege. Toxic masculinity. Darn, that's that crazy. one just went literally like straight up. Like one week they weren't had never had never mentioned it, and then the next two, like two weeks later, it's all they could talk about. Um, misogyny, um, implicit bias is a new term. Yeah, right? and hmm. let's see, we got institutional racism took off. As a, as, as a topic in the New York Times, hmm. systemic racism came out of nowhere. And then we've got whiteness, white privilege, wow. white nationalism. So, you know. It's, it's, Is this just what you find in the New York Times or can you get it anywhere else? Ah, well, actually, he's got some here, right here. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is, these are all charts showing 
New York Times, and the Washington Post. So they all move exactly at the same. In tandem, you mean. Yeah, yeah they all move. Mm. There's one here. Apparently, the Washington Post did not want to talk about patriarchy quite as much as the New York Times. <laughs> but there all the rest of them, the blue line and the red line, are like identical. Uh-huh. So I don't know what the why they didn't want to talk about patriarchy, but shame on them, Washington Post. <laughs> but so, yeah, it's uh, do you have like any a big idea quick. What, do you have any idea what could have made this happen? Like. There's people said like, oh, it's 2010, so it must be that's when social media started. So social media caused it. Everyone went no, nuts no, talking no, about no, this no. stuff, right? No. Well, no, but and that's it, that's possible. Sounds like it could be something. That's a good reason, right? Well, doesn't and it may have had sense. some effect, but there is this problem. He yeah. also did this. The, Mr. Rosado also did this work here, and this one is like really like. He did it. This is analysis of frequencies of 25 terms denoting social justice discourse in 175 million scholarly abstracts and 25 million news media articles. So it's like <laughs> the, the amount of data is just unbelievable. Uh, so the green line yes. is the uh, scholarly journals, right? Uh-huh. Papers. Uh-huh. And this orange dotted line is the news media articles who's following whom though well yeah that's what my question this this this, the the scholarly articles came about two three maybe four years before they started going up a lot but Uh look one that really is stands out here is amazing the news media articles 25 million news media articles and yet it turns must be just a couple of months on a dime turns on a dime Mm -hmm. and just starts going Mm -hmm. straight up all the way till Till today, till 2020. Wow. Just turns and just go. To that. So clearly, these news media articles just turning around and just straight up, but they are in line with what's going on in academia, right? So there seems to be like academia and the, and the New York Times just joined yeah, at the yeah, hip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which Very is much kind so. of odd. That's like, why are thing, they reporting yeah. on what's going on in academia yeah. as opposed to like, well, what's going on in the news? In the real world, yeah. Yeah. Because academia, you know, Let's, everybody well, knows a, it's a bit. Yeah closer to up on there yeah yeah so you can see how it turns on a dime there and just goes straight up the orange dotted yeah, line it does really really amazing and what are the 25 words <laughs> oh <laughs> just different the ones we were like similar to the ones we were just talking about okay now here's an interesting thing we okay. can end on this how about something that's like this happening mm-hmm. in real time like a phenomenon oh, cool. like this happening in real time all right so the new term, because there are all those terms, right? Oh, yeah. The new term is Christian nationalism. And you might have already heard it if you pay attention to the news. I have a little, yeah. I have uh, a little so bit. here's the New York Times. Christian nationalists are excited about what comes next. And that was from July 5th of this year. And here's uh, the next one. This is from July 13th. The far right Christian quest for power. We are seeing them emboldened. Let's see. Next one. What's God got to do with it? Uh, <laughs> the rise of Christian nationalism in American politics, also, also New York Times. So we got three articles. This one's August 3rd. So each week they seem to have published one major article about mm-hmm. Christian nationalism. So, so you can see it? how that straight line, right? You'll We don't have the data for it, mm-hmm. but it, but when you when the data is available, you'll it see the straight line go up and it'll all be Christian nationalism out, out of nowhere. And, the, and and there won't be any like thing before that. Uh, so the capital that? insurrection was a was as Christian nationalist as it gets. These are all, I'm sure, very well sourced, so very, very good articles. So, and then of course, all within whatever the New York Times says, then everyone else repeats it. So here's here's uh, July 28th, MSNBC. There's a terrifying reason Republicans Christian nationalism brand is so strong. I don't know what that reason is. And yeah, it, but I don't even the, know what the brand. But, I, I'm not sure what this is. About. It's the Republican brand. Oh, and and we know that it is because the New York Times is talking about it like constantly. They they use they use the word like three weeks, like six weeks ago they didn't ever use the word, but now they do use it every day. So obviously, you know. Um. So it's, so oh, now they've added. So now it's true, right? So I see what the crazy saying. thing is that people take this now mm-hmm. as the reason to do topics on. You'll see people denying. You know, Republicans are not. 
Christian nationalists, right? That'll be the constantly discussed, you know. And well, why would you? You'll, you'll see uh, Ben Shapiro slams the whole idea of it, that Republicans are about. Because mm -hmm. so now you have to respond. It's not, there's no news story. There's nothing happening in the news. And yet but you have to respond to it. And the then news. when you talk about it, then that means that it sounds like it's a legitimate issue. Well, how legitimate is it? Issue I know, is it, I'm right? just sitting here thinking they're making the news. They're not actually. How can it be a legitimate issue? You've seen all these straight up lines where. Yeah. They just out of nowhere to start talking about something. So how legitimate is that? Hmm. But anyways, that's uh, that's if you haven't seen that sort of thing, it's interesting. Well, uh, so the next time you see a, a buzzword like that just suddenly take over the news, mm -hmm. remember this is where it comes from, right? Talk they talk about an academic okay. world, and then the New York Times talks about it, and then everyone else talks about it. And what the original source of the problem is, or if there is one, and there's so no source is it, at all. Is it possible that all they want is that they start defending themselves on these concepts? <laughs> well, that's that's a good question. I mean, should you even really, don't you legitimize it when you talk about it? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this. This is just dumb, right? Right. You're, but, saying, you're saying what's important here is not the word that itself. It's the system that's being taken to make news rather than I don't know why the, exactly the, what the motivations are we just know that they mm. don't appear to come from a source of something happening in the world they're not organic basically yeah it's not it's, it's not an organic thing yeah. it's not a something happens and then they start writing about it they really literally right. start, it appears the things are being written about because they're being talked about in academia and academia is not reporting news they're, they're just making to. papers. And then the New York Times reports that as if that were news. Well, that's, it's an academic paper. That's not news. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very strange. And there didn't used to happen, right? right? And it seems like in 2010 is when it just started. Boom. They just did it. Yeah. Like constantly. Like that's mm. why did they decide to report academic well, That's a really good stuff? question. You know, yeah, why would um, they do that? I mean, what is it that the academics have to do with the news like this like yeah i don't know i don't know i mean hmm. the mm -hmm. maybe uh you know i don't know it, maybe the, the the right should start reporting on right-wing academia or something i don't know and there's is there such a thing <laughs> maybe not okay uh, all right well that's it for today thank you goodbye hmm. bye